cambiamos. <laughs> okay, all right. Hi guys, hi Finding Magic, Maria here. You guys already know me, and today I have a special guest. I have Blanca Duran. Yay! Hi. Blanca has a YouTube channel. She is also a luxury wedding photographer. She is an amazing businesswoman, and she is my guest today. Thank you. Tell everybody what we've been doing today. We had so much fun today. Maria was a guest on one of my YouTube videos, so next episode, she's gonna be there rocking it. We had so much fun. She taught us how to photograph fine art. Uh, I can't wait for you to see it. And it was so funny and full of information. She is hilarious. <laughs> um, you definitely have to check out her YouTube channel. It's full of awesome tidbits. And there's like nice little Easter eggs at the end and you can find some really fun um, <laughs> bloopers and stuff. She was, she's, she tried to steal my stuff. We'll just no, keep you it that way. No, me. I didn't no, give you it said to you. Get, you said you could take you, it home. Blind yeah, you're not going to. Yeah. Uh, so no, she's no, going to okay. be banned from yeah, the studio. Okay. We'll, so, we'll talk about yeah. it. Well, we'll talk about it after the live. But anyway, we did set up a Q&A yesterday. And we didn't get as many questions as I had hoped. But we did get quite a few questions. And I wanted to pick your brain on it. And if you're watching this live, please comment live so that we know that you're watching. For some reason, YouTube, I mean... Um, Facebook is not showing me this. If for some reason the video is upside down or wrong, I'll come back and repost it later. But in the meantime, just just hear us out. You don't even have to watch it right now. Um, but if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to submit your questions anytime I open up a Q&A. All right, you wanna get started? Yeah. Okay, well first, before we get started, how yeah. long have you been a photographer? How long have you? I've been doing it here in, in the US for 13 years. Yes. Yes. Weddings. Weddings. Simply weddings. See, did, can you read something? I, I can. Hi. I my glasses. It is sideways. No. Yay! Wait, is it sideways? Like we're upside down? What about this? Can you hear? <laughs> is that better? Fine. Okay, if I rotate it, is rotate that bad? It. Yeah. We, we can still be in, in oh, the frame. Oh, okay. All right. Is that better for you guys? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to be answering those for you today. Feel free to post some of your questions on this live as well. But yeah, you wanna just jump in? Yes. Okay. So I really loved that we had um, four new people in the group who submitted questions. So I'm very, very, very disappointed in some of you that have been here around for a while and you didn't submit your questions. So so we're just gonna answer these today. Okay, okay sure. Okay, we ready? Okay, so Myla, and I'm sorry if I say your names wrong, Myla asks, how much to charge as a beginner? Um, yeah. As a beginner. As okay. a beginner. Beginner, like, do beginner. I have photos yeah. or do I have no photos at all? I don't know. This is very different. <laughs> like, if you don't have photos at all, portfolio at all, you shouldn't be charging anything. You should be going out and bring clients, ask for, ask for the job. So do the casting. There's a great way to do casting so people don't take you for granted. So ha ask casting, say, I'm going to give you this, but have your conditions. You must meet these requirements. You have, so be very specific, but you need to forget about that looks real good or that, that about the time and I need to charge. No, if you're a beginner, first give, 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 and then you can uh, start charging. So first create your portfolio, move and go out, see how, where we, you can get the people, but work on building your portfolio yes so a lot of times we were actually talking about this yesterday on clubhouse and jessica drossen our friend mm -hmm. jessica actually mentioned this that this was one of the um mistakes that she made as a beginner is that she started charging too soon and because she wasn't confident in her work and she didn't feel ready she ended up undercharging mm -hmm. um which was not good That's because then bad. later on it's change. really really hard to raise yeah. your prices so if you are not confident in your work because you think I'm not at a level that I should be charging this much. It is very important for you to work on your portfolio and work on your craft so that you can be confident to charge. Yeah, for and sure. you don't have to like, you need to do your own, like work, get in the studio, work, 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 perfect your work. And, and uh, you, then you can go and say, hey, this is what I've done, but you really need to master it. And if you're, if you're ready to, okay, I need, I'm gonna charge, then charge, good. But you must need to put on the work on your images. And then, as Maria said, 
Now that you're ready to, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to charge. If you start very low, then it's going to, it's very hard to change people's minds about when you want to raise. So you better start higher and then start very low. So that's yeah. what I was asking. Do you have portfolio ready or, or, or do you have something already done and you need to charge? So it's two very it's different, two different stages of, mm -hmm. of your career. And actually, if you guys go back and watch the live that we did yesterday, Lemuel was in here and he really spoke about that and how, you know, you're not really selling your product, you're selling yourself. So if you're not confident in the product that you're selling, then we really need to yeah. focus on perfecting that um, so that you can charge accordingly. Um, so yeah. Do not do $50 sessions or $100 sessions. Instead, just do it for free and build your portfolio. And I know that it's going to make you feel like, no, you know, you want to get paid for your time. But you can you can still practice sales and stuff. But like the initial, your responsibility is to get that portfolio ready and then that you charge accordingly. Okay, so next question. This one came from Rita. How do you, um, how do you get people to actually hire you because she has a lot of interest in her photography and a lot of people like it and then they message her that they want to book her mm -hmm. but then nobody actually fulfills on that and she doesn't she basically isn't closing on these She's not closing clients the or on sale. these prospects yeah okay there might be many many reasons but if someone is coming to you and and doesn't give you the money there's no transaction there might be something that you're not communicating your vision maybe like the transformation when someone comes to you and need, and wants to spend money that that action is going to happen only when she sees the benefit the result the transformation like make them see what are they going to lose if they walk out of your door so probably you're not communicating you're not being clear on this is how your life is going to change if you hire me if you put, pay, pay me the money so maybe that can be one one uh, reason communicating transformation make them see the vision and make them see what they're gonna lose because we as humans we're more eager to make a change when we when we have something and then they take it away from us so if they're leaving your studio feeling like oh i'm missing i'm gonna miss it i'm not gonna have this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then they're gonna feel bad because you really made them see that yeah. little thing that you did. they're gonna be missing that thing that's gonna change their lives so that's gonna yeah start mm -hmm. from the beginning so if somebody's calling you and said oh my gosh your photos are so pretty and there's interest right there you can't immediately say hey let me have your money and this is my pricing like you're still not convincing <laughs> yeah. them so the problem is that you're not transitioning from a to b you're wow. you're trying to get them to give you money at point a and that's way too soon you're telling them marry me yes. before they get, in, yes. they get to know you so i actually had a friend who was saying that you know she would just keep trying to have a conversation instead of just going straight to pricing and they weren't booking her and she would say well they don't want to go on the phone with me and i would say well how are you asking them and she goes well when they when they uh, message me i tell them would you like to get on the phone? And I was like, well, that's your first mistake. You're, is giving, your, them you're giving them the option right. to say no. Of course they're going to say no. But if you say instead, when they message you and you say, great, I would love to talk to you about it. Do you have time for a 10 minute call? I can call you right mm -hmm. now or I can call you. Do you have time for 10 minutes mm -hmm. on the phone with me today after six? And they're mm -hmm. going to say yes or no. Um, mm -hmm. Some people will continue to be like, what is your pricing? But for the most part, most people are like, well, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. sure. Like, I'll give you 10 minutes of my time. But you have to segue them and earn their trust. And in that conversation, when you do get on the phone, the conversation doesn't start with, okay, well, it's going to be 250 for <laughs> the session fee, and then you're going to get this, this, and this, and this. So do yeah. you want to book? It doesn't go like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're going to make it, they're going to, you want them in that moment when you give them the information, the pricing, you give them the option to make a decision, a decision based on pricing. So they're only shopping and they, they're going to say, oh, I got the price. Thank you very much. I don't need to know anything more about you. And they are going to go with somebody else and comparing prices. So you need to, you know, clients, they ask you first how much because they don't know what else to ask. Exactly. Not because they don't care about the rest. Like they don't know. So you need to educate them at the first call to, yes, they're going to ask you how much, but don't feel bad when they, they ask that. Don't take it on yourself like, oh, they don't want to know, to get to know me. So yeah. it's your work, your responsibility to 
make them think about something else instead of the price. Make them forget about the price and you need to work on your sales pitch uh, so they forget on the, in the end they're gonna say, I want to get to me, you wanna come and see you. And yeah. they forget about the pricing. So there's a, need of, a lot of work that needs to be done uh, so the clients stop thinking about price. The price is irrelevant. I'm yeah, telling you. we want to like, mm -hmm. so we think that people are price shopping us, but the truth is realistically speaking in life, people make buying decisions emotionally emotionally mm -hmm. is when they choose to buy something and then they justify them mm -hmm. analytically so they don't even they have to justify later for buying yeah. it but emotional is how you get them to actually purchase from you but if you don't know about the inner circle comment inner circle and i will reach out to you and give you information about that we have several people in here who are part of the inner circle and they can tell you it's amazing and super fun and we're a very tight-knit community and that's what finding magic is about it is about community so rita welcome to finding magic okay mm -hmm. uh, monica asked um how do you consistently book clients to keep your schedule full uh, without devaluing yourselves and i do want to say we are getting we are seeing your comments with questions here um, I don't know if we'll be able to get to these questions only because I opened up the Q&A yesterday, so we have to go through these questions first. If you are finding value, don't forget to put value in the comments so I know you're enjoying these videos because you telling me you like this makes me want to do it more, right? Yes. Yeah, it's absolutely. much more fun. All right, so Monica, yeah, she said, how do you consistently book clients to keep your schedule full without devaluing yourselves? I would say really quickly, um, you want to have a planned schedule and to avoid those hills and valleys that always happens or like those feast and famine is to not over schedule yourself when you do have clients so that's what's going to create the exclusivity right so let's say you have room on your calendar to see five people in the month and ten people want to book you don't book all ten people for that month take the five for this month and then book the next couple of months and spread those other five throughout that's how you eventually start building out your schedule what most photographers do is that they take anybody that comes to them and they want to book them all and they will like jump over everything, put their families last, don't eat, don't sleep so that they can get all those clients in the month. And then what happens is that they're so busy, they're no longer marketing. So then after they're done, because they're so busy trying to fulfill on those products that then they don't have any customers the next month because wow. they never had time to market and talk to people and get people on the schedule. So instead, schedule yourself out and book yourself three months in advance mm -hmm. and eventually you're gonna have a full calendar. That's my biggest tip. That's, that's, that's great. You. And when you're doing that, it's very important that what you just say, because uh, like 80% of your clients, like 80% of the, your money comes from the 20% of your current clients. I don't know if I'm explaining myself, but so that means that you need to take care of the clients that you already have, yes. because those that 20% of clients, those are the ones that bring you the most business. Referrals. So yeah. if you're forgetting about that, and you're just trying to like, I need to get a new one, a new one, and you're having too much work and forget about promoting marketing, what you don't do now on, in marketing terms, you are gonna see it's gonna hit you 90 days from now yes, so yes. remember like in three months if you're so busy or christmas comes and eh, i'm not gonna do this from this month i'm gonna go no just chill. holiday <laughs> you're gonna see that it's gonna hit you three months later uh, uh 90 January, days later February, yeah. because it is like this so don't ever forget like oh i'm still doing great i'm not doing any any promotion right now i'm doing good yeah because your clients are coming from what you did previously yes. but wait and see if you just as are being lazy you're gonna see that it's gonna affect on your sales so that the key what you said is always be constant never go down on and, the uh, efforts of marketing and take care of your current clients always yeah so one thing that we use a lot here in finding magic is the word compound interest or think of them as mm -hmm. banking Every time that you do something, you're de making deposits into that marketing bank and eventually you get to do your withdrawals. So mm -hmm. um, we do not want to start doing deposits. You should be making deposits all of the time consistently. Um, and then you cash out little by little. All right, so moving on. I hope that answered your question. Um, Amber, um, she wanted to know, how did you figure out your pricing for couture sessions? 
um, I don't change my pricing. I, I used to do that where I would, the only thing that does change for me personally is that children by themselves are gonna be a lot easier. And so entry-wise, my collections for them are a little bit um, less expensive. Uh, because I do want to get those babies in here, but like the actual wall art and stuff like that is going to be the same price. It's just the entry point is a little bit less than it would be for a grown up or for a family. But when it comes to my boudoir, my goddess, um, my family sessions, they're all the same price. It just keeps it simple. So, yeah. Um, and that pricing just came down to the bottom line how much do I want to make and how many clients can I actually see per month without losing my mind? What about you? Awesome. What do you think? I don't do that I kind she of photography. Do <laughs> but whatever you say, it's perfect. Uh, okay, and then Roro asked, um, what kind of advice would you give to a beginner photographer? Um, wow. What would be the advice? There's, that so many. Good. there's so many. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> that one's really hard to do. Um, I would Call say, mentor. yeah, get a mentor is number one. So you have two right here. Hi check us out um so yeah so get a mentor that's actually gonna that's already done it because they can help you save so much so much time and time is money so whatever investment you put into paying for a mentor you're gonna get that back so much quicker i'm gonna tell you when i started i didn't have a mentor i had to go through youtube i had to go through google i had to go into a bunch of facebook groups and try to get little pieces of information and then try to do something with those pieces of information yeah. so that is together. and stick them together in the wrong order <laughs> yes it's a lot of mistakes yeah. it's um a lot of wasted time that I enjoyed, particularly because I was learning, but it was, it can get frustrating and you can get confused with all of the information. And if you're bouncing around from mentality to mentality, all the Facebook groups, all the, everyone's gonna be giving you different information. So it can just get really confusing. Like pick one person and then don't go ask 10 million people about it. Like pick one person who's already done it or who is doing it. Um, for instance, we both actually are running profitable businesses. You know, we take care of our families doing what we love to do. Um, so we're actually in the trenches doing it. We're not just teaching you. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, and we, made, we made so many mistakes that we want you not to make those same mistakes. And you can learn that faster if you just are disciplined and if you're coachable. That's very You important. have to be coachable. You have to take action. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that want to do it, but then there's a lot of excuses and, they and say, reasons. Oh, I already know that. Oh. Or, oh, I can't do that because of this. Yeah. I can't do that because of that. And so if I'm offering you solutions and you're telling me that none of those solutions are going to work for you, well, then I'm sorry. Then you're not ready. And yeah. that's like the tough love. But I've had people um, come in and then they're angry and upset thinking that, well, I wasted my money or I wasted mm -hmm. my time. No, you didn't do anything I asked you to do. Yeah. That's frustrating for me as a mentor. And I would rather not waste my time mm -hmm. or take your money just so that you don't do anything. That's very frustrating. I love to I see too. people grow and flourish and it's so rewarding for me. Um, but the other thing is, second piece of advice is do not limit yourself by equipment and think that because I don't have the best equipment, I can't be mm -hmm. successful because it's not about that. It's all limitations, mm -hmm. mental limitations. That's right. So think about that for a second. Like it can be an excuse on your, that your brain is giving you to not give that first step. Like, oh, until I get that flash, wait until I take this more worship about lighting. There's never going to be the right moment and never is going to be perfect. So the perfect moment is always today, yep. now. Exactly. So the, the rest are just excuses. Like give, give me a rebel and I can do the same thing as with the latest model. So that, that's not an excuse. Yep. Everything is inside you. So you just need to think about that. Carlos, how are you? Hi, Terry. I see you guys in here. Chantel. I love Chantel. I love she's that name, Chantel. Yeah, and she's in our inner circle, and she's coming to my workshop in September, so I cannot yes. wait. I see some value, value, good. Amanda. Congratulations to all of you that are coming to her workshop. In September. Wow. We're going to have so much fun. Um, Amanda says, hey, beauties. Hey. Um, <laughs> Carla says, value. Great job, ladies. So many golden nuggets. Uh, Jika. Hi, Jika. I'm so glad you're in the group. From yeah, Facebook. Clubhouse. 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 Hi, Jika. Nice now Jika. you have a face, Blanca <laughs> Duran, Maria. Yeah. Who else? What else? I'm really slow with the scrolling. You are so inspiring, ladies. Yay, have fun. Yeah. We aim to serve. Um, 
I can't read. I'm sorry for the. <laughs> I'm sorry for this question, but what is SEO? It is site engine optimization. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what it's counts words. Yeah, so it don't, was, ask, don't ask me. <laughs> it's a technical question. Um, basically, you want your website to perform well and rank on Google. So when people search you, you want to appear mm -hmm. on the first three pages of Google. But your goal is to be one of the top three names on the first page because those people are usually the people that get all the hits and they take all of your business. So just a little bit of research and seeing who is actually ranking for your area and your competition. You can go through their site and see like what are what are they doing, what words are they using that's helping them rank. Um, but if you start performing really well for your keywords, you can beat these people and rank higher than them. We don't wanna go and copy them. That's not what we're saying. We want you to have good competitive strategy because sometimes only one person is using the, the keywords and it, it, it's really yeah. easy for you to outrank them. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. Live, thank you so much. Value, you're the best. Oh, you're welcome, Erica. Love having you here. Thank you for joining, Jorge. Maximo, respeto, Blanca, y Micaela. Yay, Jorge. And Karina says, I see. Thank you for answering that question. Wonderful. All right, you guys. Well, if that is all of the questions, we will see you guys later. Remember to keep posting and engaging. I will open up Q&A on Monday. Today is Favorite Photo Friday. So share your favorite photos that you have taken this week, this year, this month, or of all time. And use the hashtag Favorite Photo and we will feature you guys. We're also doing um, the theme of the week is flower. So share your flower pictures and one of them is going to be selected to be the group cover photo. Remember to follow me on TikTok, follow Blanca as well. She is on Instagram. She is on YouTube, also on TikTok. And your next episode, she's going yeah, to be, I'm going to be in the next, next episode. episode on YouTube. So Blanca Duran, go YouTube and search Blanca Duran. You're going to find me and it's going to say the banner, Como Vivir de la Fotografía. She's going to be there. I'm going to be on next. there. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And I'm going to pick her brand so she can help me with my YouTube so we can yeah yeah you're gonna help me with tiktok and we're gonna help her with tiktok we're gonna yeah we're, we're killing dream it. team dream team all right bye you guys love you i'll see you guys later